Good morning, colleagues. Today we have a special presentation of the about the crisis in the Belarusian regions. Please, those of you who have not marked yourself, please do that. If you want to ask questions after our speakers, please raise your hands or write the question in the chat. Our presentation will last an hour. Our speakers today are Agora Stapenia, Research Director of the Center for New Ideas. Good afternoon, Rigor. Kinadi Korshinov, sociologist, senior analyst of the Center for New Ideas. Hello, Anto Radinkov, director of the Center for New Ideas. Hello. I'd like to remind you that we have simultaneous interpretation available. So if it's more convenient for you to use this option, choose the English track. If you choose the Russian track, you can hear us in Russian and Belarusian. Colleagues, when our presentation is on and will be on in a couple of seconds, please turn off your mics so that we don't have any noise interference. Our sound quality depends directly on this. Record, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anton. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Igor Stapenia. Like uh, Anton said, I'm the director of the Center for New Ideas. I also manage the Belarus Initiative at the Chatham House. Before we start the today's discussion, I wanted to thank our partners. It is the press club that helped us organize today's event. Also, it is the our partners from the Conrad and Nauer Foundation and the Center for European Research. Without their contribution, the today's research could not have been possible. It is very important for us to have made this research because the long-term development is one of the major priorities of our center. I'll give you a bigger picture. In fact, regions have always been part of our focus. Before we moved abroad, when we were in Minsk, we conducted various events in Minsk and in the regions. We published a regular rating of the Belarusian cities. We're planning to update it this year. Also, today we have a podcast coming out called The Deep People. I uh, uh, prompt you to I urge you to subscribe to it in all the social feeds. We also have a, an, an educational program helping regional leaders to develop their competencies. Basically, all these regional programs are in many ways the result of uh, our interest in the regions. And it being the primary reason for the disproportion or disbalance that is growing. I mean the disbalance between the Minsk and regional cities and the smaller communities. The growing gap between the cities in Belarus is actually evident. So we'll first give floor to uh, Evgeny, then to Gennady Korshinov, who joined the Center for New Ideas about three weeks ago. For a long time, he conducted sociological research in Belarus. He'll be able to tell you about the regional problems even more than all of us combined. Anton, please. Thank you, Rigor. I will share with you the presentation. Can you, can you see it? Hope you can. Thank you once again for joining our today's discussion. We conducted this research in the summer. It involved several parts. One of the parts consisted of the survey 
we conducted at the end of June 2021, and uh, 2,865 people were involved. But there's a disclaimer. This is the initiative that came about after the election of the 2020. First and foremost, it analyzes the nucleus of the protest. So we need to understand that uh, the conditions of this sample are special. So it's not exactly in line with the structure of the site. It shows the mood of an, a certain part of, of the society. We also um, conducted expert focus groups meetings. We spoke with the regional representatives of the regional NGOs, activists, and we checked our uh, thesis and our thoughts on them. A few words about uh, our audience. There were about 5,000 people, almost half of them, 48% are uh, means dwellers, then 18% from the regional centers and the artistic centers, 10% each, and 10% uh, from the smaller towns and the villages. In terms of age, our audience was from 31 to 50 years old. And our biggest uh, difference is that it's mostly involved people with a higher education of 77% to be exact. And uh, in terms of society, there are about 30% like that. So this is our biggest difference. Uh, coming to uh, major outcomes, we'll see that the major problem that they believe is the political crisis now. It's uh, the repressions, a lack of trust in the law enforcement bodies, and also anxiety. People are worried about uh, personal security and safety. There's a difference between the regions. If you see, if you look at the screen, you'll see the political repression are far ahead other issues. And 83% people in the Minsk said it's a major problem in the regions. The figure is 49%. Again, we conducted this survey at the end of June and we'll see how different the level of repression is in Minsk compared to the regions. We see that the repressions are changing in terms of uh, the target audience here. More and more people in the production facilities and the plants are affected by the repression. So we'll probably see different figures soon. In the second place, we had the trust in the motion bodies and the police. This problem is more acute among the Minsk dwellers. In the third place, there were the trust in the local authorities. The figures are almost the same here. The, you should understand that the, uh, in the second frame, we asked people how far people, how much people are worried about the repression and 92% of our respondents in Minsk said they're very much worried about that and the political repression. Oh, the smaller the city, the smaller the figures. We didn't break down figures in terms of regions or oblast, because the, the bigger correlation in terms of city sizes than the regions. There's the biggest difference, the types of the cities. You'll see it later, further on when we talk about the economy and social sphere. A dangerous factor that will be, that will be mentioned by Gennady is that the, the repressions undermine the trust in the authorities. We noticed that during the focus group events, the authorities don't want really um, communicate with people more and uh, meet them in the middle. And the two parallel worlds arise. One of the worlds, the authorities exist, another world, people exist. They don't always understand each other very well. We can see here a connection between the 
types of cities in Minsk where the recent figures are the highest. The authorities are very repressive. The trust in authorities is the lowest. In the regional cities, it's different. People still don't trust that much into authority in, uh, in authorities, but that's not that acute. And the third factor was that this lack of trust to authorities leads to the feeling of trust, feeling of corruption. So people believe that if the authorities don't, um, if, if people don't trust them, they believe that the authorities are being corrupt and acting in their own interest. If you look at the figures of our respondents, you will, you will see that they believe that the, there's a high level of corruption in those when asked about the spheres, they responded that it's the local authorities. Businesses said it's only 30%, even though they should actually believe that the figures should be higher. And the rest is communal services, education, road building, etc. This is our first block of problems that we detected. It's about the repression that is not uh, going down and this repression leads to the, as I said, to the l lower trust and the leading to the long-term risks and the erosion of the state institutions. People believe that the, the value of the state is going down, which is not very good for the sovereignty. The second block of issues has to do with the economic depression. It is well known that the Belarusian economy hasn't shown very high growth figures for a number of years. This gap between the Minsk and the regions is evident and has been evident since the crisis of 2016 when the Minsk went back to the growth temple shown before the crisis and the regions they had to catch catch up the same way people in Minsk and the regions are worried by the high prices and then we see a gap in the working places number of jobs this problem uh, is bad for 25 percent of the people in the regions, 20% in the cities. It shows how easy it is to find job in Belarus. If you live outside of big city, it's very difficult. 76% say so. In Minsk, only 26% of people, of respondents, think it's difficult to find a job there. It has to do with the degradation of the budget and uh, uh, sector for many and uh, for many years this area has been uh, in a bad shape in the rural areas people are in the difficult economic conditions that's very difficult for them hard for them to find a job. Minsk is more dynamic in this respect. There are a bigger share of private businesses that is more adaptive, adaptive to the economic situation. People are more mobile. They move more often. This problem is not acute for them. We talk about the prices. There is no difference that much. All people in Belarus believe that the prices in, in the country are high, definitely high. It has... When we ask people about the my immigration or migration, we saw that the over 50% of the respondents believe that the more and more people are leaving the country, looking for jobs, the recent wave of migration last year has to do with the political situation in the country, but 
if at the beginning of the next year the we'll face will face the economic crisis the political migration wave will be followed by the economic migration wave these are our outcomes and conclusions the major problem is that the st public sector is degrading and doesn't create enough working places in the regions the Russians are are afraid of uh, the imminent crisis and the growing prices. Chatham House noted the same issue. And now the Minsk dwellers are leaving because there are more mobilities for them to look for a job and they face the bigger uh, repression. But if the crisis persists, we should expect them. more figures of more people trying to leave the country. The third block of problems has to do with the social state. Belarus is less and less a welfare state. Belarusians feel that. Again, we clearly see the difference in terms of social services. 24 people in the region said that they had bad quality of the roads, while only 5% in, in Minsk are worried about the same. The same is true about the quality of the medical services, 21% on the regions to 11% in the city in the Minsk. Again, Minsk remains the only city which gives a part of it uh, revenues and some kind of money into the state budgets. It has its own infrastructure. These resources will be going down, but compared to the regions, Minsk is relatively well off. The regions are receive big subsidies from the uh, national budget, but they don't have much uh, money to spend on the infrastructure. Since the crisis will probably persist, we expect there will be, uh, the social infrastructure will be also deteriorating. You can see the, how the perception of the road quality has been changing. If we ask the people in the regions, 40% will say that the roads are not in good shape. It, somewhere, when you ask people about their problems they face in daily life in the regions, they say it's the roads. Um, there'll be there are traffic jams due to because of that. There are bad inroads and the bad bridges in the upcoming years. There'll be no money to repair them. The same is true about the social infrastructure. Experts said the quality of the social services is going down. There is a problems in the healthcare, education. People are leaving and there's a acute sh staff shortage. The third block of issues. It is our bonus. But again, people are worried about them as well. Those are environmental issues. They're not perceived as acute as the social, political, economic issues, but they are directly influence the quality of life of Belarusians. Even though Belarusians do not perceive the environmental issues as the most acute ones, but if we look at it, about half of Belarusians believe that the environmental protection is not that good and the environmental situation is not that good. Not much difference in terms of respondents. Okay, here are the top uh, issues. Industrial emissions are followed by exhaust fumes, then followed by tree cutting, 47% landfills and garbage, and 36% believe the sewage and water pollution are the major problems. The first two ones are, are connected with the big city life. lots of vehicles. At the same time, we need to understand that the majority of the regions, this way or another, there were conflicts at the state level 
between the activists and the state authorities regarding the industrial enterprises. It's the breast battery plant, the Maglev plant, Svetlogorsk uh, plant. We see that the new industrial enterprises, they create tension in the cities. In all the above mentioned cases, these issues were solved not in favor of the activists. All these enterprises were launched this way or another. Our conclusion here is that the bad en environment, very much connected with the operation of the industrial enterprises, that become the point of tense tension in the authorities, and the authorities still unable to solve these issues. Overall, I must say that, that in all the areas, the situation is deteriorating. Sometimes it looks like uh, it's uh, in the deadlock because the effort is early tried to reanimate or resuscitate the situation in the regions. There was an attempt to create the Shmiani, recreate the Shmiani region. Overall, the economic issues are nothing new in the regional lives, but the political crisis worsened them very much. And they are now seen through the prism of political tensions. And the gap it will be growing between Minsk, which remains the economic driver of the city, while the regions remain far back. Many Belarusians will probably go to Minsk to find the job to find a higher salaries but it's a long-term problem Belarusians will be less and less happy with their life it is these the social and political disasters will probably contribute to the tension in society since uh, Belarusian authorities cannot provide the, the quiet and the well of life to be Belarusians. This problem will continue, it will persist. It persists. This crisis has been with us for over a year now. We'll stop here. Thank you, Anton. If you have questions, please raise your hands, write them in the chat, and I will ask Gennady to comment at the survey, the research made by Anton and his colleagues. Thank you. And hello, a few points on my side, so that we have time for Q&A. Indeed, one of the specific features of Belarus is that the major, major division of Belarus happens not from the north to the south or the east to the west. Belarus is very concentric. And the main division is in terms of types of cities. The Minsk is in the center, which uh, houses over 20 percent of the population and it's not surprising it is a uh, quite natural because the belarus is a very much a very a very urbanized country according to late a lot of this data we're not the most urbanized country in the europe but uh, we are probably the most urbanized country in the eastern europe during the Masharov times, Minsk was only behind Mexico, behind, uh, behind Mexico. Uh, it had to do with uh, this quick modernization, which led to this shift to the postmodernist values that we observe in Belarus. But for the quality and the amount of urbanization, we would not witness such a higher degree of the politicization that we saw in 2020. Secondly, in terms of trust, without a doubt, we as a country, as the state, we have a huge problem so based on the data from Chatham House, we may say that the trust 
in all the state institutions, particularly if we uh, do not consider the amina, the level of trust about 40 percent in terms of other social institutions and agencies from the CC to the parliament, president, the police and the courts. This gap is from 15 to 25 percent. Basically, it's a catastrophe. to build an analytical research here. The, the scientists usually think about the state and the civil society. In our case, I believe, be more realistic to add the authorities. Anton also mentioned that about, spoke about the space of the authorities. It is the authorities that people don't trust. Very often we see it in the media space, people talk about the schism in society, about the split in society, but it's not so much about the split in society, it's split between the authorities and the people. On the other hand, mistrust in the state, in the state institutions is one thing. The other thing that uh, is that we can say now that the authorities are doing everything to uh, destroy the state. Uh, in the near future, this trend will continue. Why and how? Every social institution has a, its particular public function to treat, to uh, educate people, to put out fires, etc. Currently, the authorities, as uh, Foucault said, there is a function of punish and uh, observe in the educational and the healthcare sphere. The social institutions work at their primary functions. Now, the the major function of the state is to observe or the monitor and punish. So the state is destroyed from two sides by the mistrust on the part of the thought on the people and by its own change in the function. That's in a nutshell. If there are questions, I uh, can add, uh, answer them. Thank you, Gennady. Colleagues, Please, uh, you're welcome to write questions in the chat, raise your hand, use your voice to ask them. We have a question from Oksana. I think it's Oksana Shelestov. The disproportion of the conditions in Minsk and the regions has been around for a long time. It has been described a number of times. You're saying it's growing and it will be growing. Have there been any comparisons made that confirmed that maybe we witness uh, the situation which uh, basically is moving the same duration as in the past. We're using the data from the IPM. 18 months they had conducted research on that. They basically tried to compare the average wage in Minsk and in the regions and the rayons districts we and they saw a growing gap and it used to be 70 percent difference 50 percent difference we saw we see a growing trend here the question another question was there about the environment i'll read it out so that people wouldn't understand it better I think we should analyze more the environmental block depending on the on the city size and the town size. Basically, it's all about, you know, uh, people worried about the exhaust fumes, mostly in the big cities and the, in the rural areas, not that much of a problem. Again, the industrial emissions, 
are a nuisance for big city dwellers. In terms of radiation, it's uh, mostly a problem for uh, Gomel region dwellers and not for anyone else. As to the quality of the water resources and the tree cotton, they're even. Thank you, colleagues. Any more questions? There was a question about I think Anton answered that passionately. Did you try to analyze the plans of Belarusians? What do you think of them? This research, we did not try to analyze them, but the events that took place in the past, they affected the situation in the last several years, affected the number of people leaving the country. Another question from Oksana. She has raised her hand. Well, everyone is silent. I'm glad to uh, welcome everyone. Another commentary from me. As far as I understand, the data from the APN that you referred to is the data of the, of the past about the disproportion between the Minsk and the regions. In the peaceful time, it was changing. It was evolving. Today, I think the situation cannot be different. I don't know if you have uh, the, the latest, the fresh data, but what I mean here is that we should treat this forecast cautiously and saying that uh, something is growing is very, could be dangerous because the situation of the crisis, the political crisis that we have found themselves, ourselves in and the growing economic crisis as well. It changes the processes and the balance of the processes that we have been able to witness. But I wanted to ask you about something else, I actually forgot. Anyway, I wanted to ask you about the following. You showed us the data that has to do with the corruption level evaluation. I believe that in fact, the trust to in authorities now in the past, it, it, it is not connected with the level of corruption, but maybe you analyzed it deeper. Did you analyze how the attitude to political repression, how the trust in the local authorities or whatever correlates with the perception of corruption? As I said, we uh, surveyed the protest audience, which means that they are skeptical about the all kinds of authorities. It was clear from the graphs, we can see a connection here. The bigger the city, the higher level of repression, the higher level of mistrust. It's obvious that people, the authorities, when they repress people, they, they should not expect a very good attitude. We didn't expect such big numbers because of corruption, but we need to research this further to find out about the long-term trends. We need to rethink them. Next question from Yelena Kowalchuk and Grodno Life. In the investigative committee, they recently spoke about the difference between the eastern and western regions, saying that in the west, there are more criminal cases started than in the east. How do you explain that the, the opinions of the people living in the east and west is not much different? Is there a difference between the east and the west in Belarus? Again, 
there are some differences in the regions. You will see it in the in the full uh, research paper. There's a difference between the regions, but it's not that much about the regions. But uh, in terms of concrete cities, in Brest, there's the biggest number of political prisoners compared to other regional cities. It has to do with the well-known political cases. These differences uh, have always been marked by us. Another hand raised by Evgeny. I wanted to add that uh, I fully agree with what Anton said regarding the specific nature of the cities in Brest. The protest started in, not in 2020, but much earlier. They started to self-organize in protest of the battery plant construction. Secondly, we need to understand that the, undoubtedly the regions are different. This difference does not always affect the big processes. But in short, we can see that the breast and breast region I'm trying to I'm looking for the proper word so the basically we must say that the the people who have been counting on themselves working on themselves in the you know, in their own businesses, while in the Grodno, it's the like a city that very much has the feeling of nobility, the so-called the city of two kings, and the Grodno regions. This is the only city whose uh, dwellers did not plan to go to Minsk, while other regions have always planned to go to Minsk for so-called upgrade. Uh, and the Grodno region is dwellers are quite fine with the life there. If we talk about Gomel, we need to can understand the, the situation connected to Chernobyl. Chernobyl pretty much affected the attitude of the people living there too, not to authorities and total but the towards the people uh, like the emergency rescue services and the people from various services like the army so people still believe still remember that in Magilov it's not it's quite blurred and in terms of, in Minsk this is a destination point also, I think the human factor should be considered here. If I understand it right, the, the heads of the interior ministries in the regions, they had a different approach to suppressing the protest. In Brest, it was very harsh. In Grodno, they almost reached a negotiation point. In the Vitebsk region, there were some hotbeds. Of disturbance, but the majority of people from the presidential administration um, come from Vitebsk region. So it's not only about the regions, it's a, about the specific nature of the local authorities and the towns where they work. That's it for me. Aksana has a small comment. I will read it out. The border between the East and the West is still only in the heads of people who are stuck in the past. The service of the last 10 years 
show that the differences are not that deep. In terms of repression, the lowest number of repression, I mean, uh, in the Vitebsk region, they said it's very high in the Gomel region, in Grodno region, it's the highest. 69% said it's uh, considerable. Overall, there's no uh, stark difference. It's not like 16% and 30%. As to the, as asking about the possibility of workforce and job creation, how the situation changed in the last 18 months. 48% said it became more difficult to find a job. 30% said it said that it became more difficult and only 11% said that the situation made the same and there is no difference between the types of cities be it Minsk or regional cities, the data is similar. The figures are much smaller in Minsk, are a bit smaller in Minsk, but the difference is not that big. Thank you. Maria Malavka, Nebrask, Gazeta, Brest newspaper. Question to Mr. Korshnov. Can we say that due to the urbanization tempo, the Belarusian society became very much uh, unbalanced in terms of time. So the people over 70 don't really understand much about the development of civil society and the economy, while their grand uh, sons and granddaughters are postmodernist people. Can you see this, this balance of different viewpoints? That's a very interesting question, actually two of them. The difference between the generations exist, but it's not a unique case. This is not unique in this sense. It is present in Europe and Russia because the people uh, of 60 plus years old find it difficult to get involved in the digitalization. And on the other hand, um, the difference between the different uh, political viewpoints is there, but it's not a problem of generations. It's an issue of values, the mismatch. But it doesn't, it has nothing to do with the age. If we look at different research and figures, there were some research papers on Soviet identity. They found some correlation with age, but it's not major. It was clear in terms of protest and anti-protest moods. There's no hard correlation in terms of age. There is some specificity, but it's not connected with the age, education. It is a gap in terms of values but not age-related. Thank you. Michael Anderson from Al Jazeera Documentaries. So the social contract of Lukashenko and Belarusians is going down. Lukashenko is losing not only means, but the regions. If you were Lukashenko, what would you concentrate on in order to save yourself? What is some quick fixes in the regions? What could you afford now? The situation is difficult in the, because Lukashenko doesn't have quick fixes. All his attempts, like I mentioned about the Arshansky Rayon, they failed. The major problem lies in the sphere of economy. Consequently, it's important to support the budget sector. If it shrinks, if the social sector shrinks, 
if the quality of the healthcare degrades further, if the, there are fewer teachers, all the regions will be affected. Secondly, is the social infrastructure. In recent years, Lukashenko worked closely with the European institutions that gave money to the for the new roads, the new bridges. There was an EBRD programmer seeking to repair the bridges, 16 bridges. So if a bridge fails in the city, there will be transport collapse. Now I think Lukashenko will be trying to find money to repair the social infrastructure. The, there were rumors about the Eurasian Bank loans. Uh, and this way it will replace EB, the, B, the EBRD. But the problem is different. It's obvious that when you have a weak economy, you cannot try to help the regions that uh, where everything is bad and the number of such regions is growing. While in the past, in big regional cities felt fine. In uh, they will now feel not okay because of the general deterioration of the infrastructure. I just wanted to add that these issues have been accumulating for decades. If we uh, talk about the social contract here, its degradation started not 10 years ago. Then the degradation of the social contract that was made during the first elections of Lukashenko, a shift and movement away from them started in the early 2000s. It was then uh, when the, the economic base under the welfare state that the authorities trying to showcase became slower. The tax system was changed. The, gradually. So basically it started in 2004, five, six, seven. Colleagues, any more questions, please? I saw a hand raised by Svetlana Chakushka. Svetlana, please. Good afternoon. I just wanted to comment the previous uh, discussion, part of discussion regarding the relationship between the local authorities and the protesters. I come from Vitebsk. For several months, I lived there during the protest. Comparing Vitebsk and Minsk, I may confirm, based on my subjective views, that indeed we in Vitebsk we felt that the local law enforcement bodies and local authorities behave differently. And uh, not so harsh compared to the Minsk authorities. It, it is obvious by the number of the sentences and the same articles uh, put people in jail for different time. So if it is small, everybody knows everyone. Maybe it has to do with that. I don't know. I'm not sure. But this trend exists. Thank you. Thank you, Svetlana. Colleagues, any more questions? There was a question from the forum. How uh, can I join the, the new ideas team? Is it possible? We always welcome in new people in our team. Please write me on Facebook, on social feeds, and uh, 
Telegram. We'll be always happy to tell you how you can support us, how you can cooperate with us. Great. Any more questions? I have a commentary from YouTube. Senior Fly says that corruption in all the spheres, corruption business is something that was imposed by our state. That's uh, their opinion, Alexander, please. I have a technical question. Since the Center for New Ideas likes to hold press conference before publishing the data, the reports. I just wanted to ask, have you already published the full data? I know that you are showing now the incomplete data, but when and where we can find the data? I'm sure the journalists will find it interesting. We already published this data. Usually we're trying to publish this data, but not really. Uh, be too public about it. This way we'll, we'll have more people coming to our conferences and events. But this presentation is already available on our, our, our website, has already been published. I believe that after the conference, we can send it to all the participants. I send a, a link in the chat. It is available in our social feeds as well. There'll be a full report available. Okay. Great. Well, I think I don't see any more questions. Looks like there, there are none. Would like to thank our colleagues from the Center for New Ideas. Thank you to all journalists for your questions, for your participation. Those are who are watching us on YouTube, please subscribe to the Press Club Belarus channel, like our channel and uh, help us get to as much as easy as possible to you. And see you later. Thank you.